in this video, we'll be setting up Visual Studio Code for web development. To get started, you can browse to code.visualstudio.com where we will proceed to download the application. From here, I would proceed to the download page, which will list all of my download options. So if I have a Windows PC, then I have the Windows options. If I have Linux or if I have Mac, there is a version available. And the great thing is that it's free and open source. So for Windows, you have a few options. You can download the installer or you can download the .zip package. So the .zip package is very convenient if maybe you always have to be on the move. You can just download the .zip package, probably unzip it to a flash drive or something that's portable. And whenever you need to, you just launch it from that device. So we can proceed to get the installer, the 64-bit or well, based on the operating system you have, you choose accordingly. I have a 64-bit one, so I'll choose 64-bit, which will initiate the download. Once the download is complete, you can proceed to launch the installer. And it's a pretty straightforward process. You just need to click next and next and next and then install and allow it to do its thing. And once that's finished, you can proceed to click Finish and launch Visual Studio Code. Now, when you launch Visual Studio Code for the first time, all you're going to see is this black screen and the cursor. It's pretty much just a text editor. HTML documents are really just text documents and Pretty much any text editor can be used to author these HTML documents. However, Visual Studio Code kind of helps you with that process where it provides some amount of intelligence to help you with your development activities. But before we go much further, I just want us to take a little tour of what Visual Studio Code looks like, what each button and each icon means. So if we click the two papers here and we see when we hover, we see Explorer, we click it, it gives us like a little file explorer view of all of the files that are available to us in the current project. It has an advanced search feature where we can search and if needs be search and replace throughout our document that is open and every other document that is there. We have Git or source control extensions. We have debugging extensions. We have extensions that we can install from the package manager. And then we have some other ones that are not absolutely necessary right now. So right now I want us to install some extensions that you may find useful. The first one that I want to bring to your attention is live server. So from the extensions tab, you can view the marketplace and you are able to get a bunch of plugins it is open source, so that means you can create extensions to extend the capabilities of the regular text editor. So Live Server is a really nice tool. So I just typed in Live Sir, and it, this one came up. Just make sure it's Ritwick Day. And this application or this extension really helps you to preview your work very easily. All right. So Right now, my, I have it installed already, so I'll see disable slash uninstall, but you'll probably see something like install. So you can just go ahead and click install and allow Visual Studio Code to install that extension. The next extension that I recommend you install is HTML snippets. So you can just type in HTML5 and the very first search results would be HTML snippets. So you can go ahead and install that. And then finally, the HTML boilerplate. So you can install that one. So once again, you want live server, you want the HTML5 snippets, and you want the HTML boilerplate. And they generally give you instructions as how to install, but we just did that, but also how to use the extensions. But as we go along, we'll be seeing how they're used so you don't have to worry about that right now. Now, let's just walk through how we go about creating a new space for a new website. So I'm going to close this tab for the extensions, and then I'm going to go back to my Explorer. And then you see here that it's empty. It's saying, do you want to open folder? There's no folder. There's nothing here. There's no file, nothing. Maybe you still have the empty file open, but it's useless at this point. So what we're going to do firstly is create a folder. I always recommend that when you're about to build a website, which is a collection of web pages or documents and files that are applicable to one website that you create a folder. All right. So if we're going to be building a website for my, you know, personal website, then you want to create a folder 
and then everything that is related, every file that is related to your personal website will be inside that folder. So what I'll do is take a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to click open folder inside Explorer, which will then lead me to browse. So I have a folder on my computer where I put all my projects, but you may have a better place for yours. But the fact is I want you to create a new folder and then we're going to name this new folder my personal website. Now, I always recommend also that you don't use any spaces in the name of your folder. So your files, your HTML files, the file names, or any file, don't put any spaces in the file name. And well, if you have to, you know, if you don't like camel casing and you want to create something that looks like a space, then use an underscore, but do not put any spaces. So after creating that folder, and then I browsed to the folder. So I created a folder, renamed it, and then I went inside. Then I go ahead and select folder. Now the context of Visual Studio Code is going to change to that folder. And then it will start listing the files that are available in that folder. Of course, it was empty. There's nothing in here. So the first file that we're going to create is index. And this is another recommendation. Your homepage, your first file in any website, in any web page should always be index. index.html. That is our new extension. All right. So Word documents, get the extension .doc. HTML documents, when we're building our website, we'll get the extension .html. So I'm going to go over how I created that file. Let me just delete it. And then Visual Studio Code gives us a nice little button right here that says new file. So I could have right clicked and said new file. I could have gone to file and said new file, but then they give me that icon right there that says new file. They all do the same thing. So I'm just going to click new file and then it's asking me for the file name. If I just press enter, it will give me an error. I need to provide a file name. Visual Studio Code will contextually determine the type of file. So if I just said .h, then it knows, then it's going to say, oh, that might be a C programming file. If I did said .cpp, that's also a C++ file. But in this situation, we want HTML. So when we say index.html and press enter, then it creates the file and gives us that blank document, but then you notice the icon changes a bit. Now, modern day tools make it very easy for us to get up and started with HTML documents. And given all the extensions that we just created, I'm going to show you a very easy way to start generating your HTML code. And that is by typing HTML. And then you see that Visual Studio Code is giving you some code hinting, but then I can go down to HTML colon five. So Emmet, that is the engine that runs these, what we call snippets inside of Visual Studio Code. So we can just say HTML colon five, press enter, and then it will generate that HTML, what I call the HTML skeleton. Every HTML document should look like this before it gets any content. Now that's it for installing Visual Studio Code. In the next video, we will start dissecting this document, all of these elements and these tokens and understanding exactly what this means.